Okay, this talk will be about the stomach and the colon and associated issues like candida and parasites. So the stomach and colon are really unique because they're essentially kind of a dumping ground of trauma. Many, many different trauma constructs which don't fit any of the other archetypes in the body get stored in the stomach and colon. So the trauma construct associated with the stomach and colon is quite logical. It's an indigestible situation. And it's unique in the way that it's perceived by consciousness and what triggers these constructs because it's um, an indigestible situation that's conceptualized as an item. So in German New Medicine, they call it um, an indigestible morsel conflict or an indigestible chunk conflict. And what that means is this construct is activated by indigestible situations that are represented conceptually by a discrete item so, for example, the things I've seen activate this trauma construct is, um, I've seen this one quite a few times, is people, as children, walk in on their parents um, with drugs around. So if you're a kid and you walk in and your dad has a bag of cocaine on the table, you don't really know what's going on, but intuitively you know this is weird, this is indigestible, this is dirty. Um, and it's conceptualized, the whole situation, the whole indigestible situation is conceptualized as this item, this bag of white powder. So this is the kind of setup that causes trauma in the gut or colon. And this is what can lead to kind of candida issues and irritable bowel, etc. So it's um, <clears throat> really shocking how often it's a kid walking in on their parents doing drugs. I had a case where somebody had this issue and... His dad was an alcoholic and he walked into the garage and there was a case of beer just kind of sitting in the middle of the garage and his dad was a mess and kind of intuitively everything was indigestible and uh, by conceptualizing it into that box it caused this trauma in the stomach. Um, you might also find something like this. Let's say you were coming home um, to, to your house, your wife was there and she was cheating on you and you walk in and you see a pair of another man's boxers sitting on the ground. And you just know this whole situation is indigestible. You know what's happening, but it's conceptualized as an item, a discrete item. Uh, this is the kind of thing that really anchors into the stomach and colon. And these are quite psychobiologically active. So, for example, if you had a trauma like this, you might find that every time you come home from work after that, your stomach gets tight or you get a little queasy, you're nauseous. And you blame it on the stress, uh, you blame it on the food at work, etc. But um, these trauma constructs really restage and reactivate quite rapidly and quite psychobiologically actively. And because this is such a conceptual based trauma, because the whole situation is conceptualized into an item, um, the trauma is multiplied by the cartoon nature of it. So, for example, my friend that walked in with the seeing his dad drinking in the beer box right in the middle of the room, the box being in the middle of the room and being kind of a conceptual item, like kind of a cartoonish video game, just items sitting there, that's what really causes the conceptual shock that triggers these traumas. So, for example, if the box was in the corner of the room with two of the edges of the beer container mating to the edges of the wall and you walk in, it won't be such a conceptual shock because the item is not that discreet. It's almost blending in with the construct of the wall. It's almost covered up. But um, if this is an item in the middle of the room or on a table displayed really conceptually and really separately from the other constructs around in your perception, um, this is the kind of conceptual shock which really triggers this. So. If you have issues with your stomach or colon, it's important to think about times when you've kind of been shocked by an out-of-place item that represented an indigestible situation. And kind of the more out-of-place and in-your-face the item is, and the more it kind of looks cartoonish, the more this will be an issue. Um, <clears throat> the colon and the stomach differ in that the colon holds the trauma of dirty indigestible items. 
So very often these traumas of seeing your parents doing drugs, uh, these will sit in the colon because you know it's dirty, it's nasty. Um, same probably with the previous example about seeing another man's underwear in your home. Something like that would probably sit more in your colon and cause irritable bowel syndrome, whereas a conceptual item that wasn't necessarily dirty uh, would sit more in your stomach. So let's say if you go into work and there's a stack of papers on the desk that say, list of people getting fired today. And you walk in and there's just an empty table and right in the middle of the table there's this kind of cartoon stack of papers which you know are going to lead to you getting fired. Uh, this is kind of a common setup for trauma in the stomach which would link, uh, which would trigger um, what we call candida. So the thing about candida is that it's a natural adaptive system in the body. If you have trauma constructs in ectoderm-based tissues from embryology, for example, tissues lining the inside of the digestive canal or the outside of the body, these traumas naturally um, use an advanced method of reintegration where they basically bioenergetically open the doors for pathogens to self-assemble and um, they create an opening for pathogens to assemble there. And it's a way of digesting the trauma construct energetically, bioenergetically. It's a way of using <clears throat> kind of external organisms, external tools to help digest an indigestible situation. The thing with chronic candida, though, is um, it's often a hanging healing. For example, you know, you have this trauma in your stomach, um, you make peace with it, and then something triggers it again. It's the same program, um, but just going dormant and then reactivating. Every time it reactivates, um, the candida will remodel your stomach, and it's kind of this process of building up tissue and breaking down tissue. And this process is repeated too often or cycled too much due to the nature of your reality and what you experience and what triggers this construct. Uh, this is how you get things like candida, parasites, cancer. We talked about previously in the advanced psychobiology section the concept of an entity. Um, when you have a trauma with such a strong sensory component that the body can't store it, when all the information in the trauma of what you're experiencing during the trauma is too much, the body compresses it down into kind of an archetype and then allows either self-assembly or external attachment of constructs we call entities, which are kind of um, sensory information which is assembled into a consciousness and some element of life force. So this is um, what seems to happen with parasites. So you have an indigestible construct in your stomach. Your body wants to digest it, it wants to heal, but it's not doing, through, it's doing so through the consciousness realm. So it allows it to try to heal through the bioenergetic realm, the physicality, by allowing in parasites to attach. And these parasites, you know, they're parasitic by nature but they also serve some digestive purpose. Parasites are a bit unique in that way in that they're often a response to micro-trauma, something we would never consider trauma. So for example, let's say you go to a birthday party and there's <clears throat> a birthday cake and it's just so sweet and it has so many citrusy flavors and candy flavors and there's an incredibly strong sensory experience. You know, you, you eat this cake and you just kind of go into a state of bliss and there's this kind of moment where you're just like overwhelmed by the sensory situation of the food. This is how a parasite uh, comes about. And it doesn't have to be negative. It doesn't have to be that the food was so disgusting you couldn't digest it conceptually and parasite had to come in. It can happen any time the sensory experience of a food is just too loud. Uh, it causes kind of a micro trauma in the stomach of, oh, this is too loud for me. This is too conceptually loud. This is too conceptually indigestible. I need external help. So you can see this in um, people who do gut cleanses. If you do fasting for long term um, you do juicing, you do some advanced protocols like the Zen cleanse, which is amazing. 
you'll notice a few days in, you'll start to get flashes of foods, kind of food cravings in a way. But they're not necessarily cravings. When it happened to me, I noticed it wasn't foods I was conceptualizing. It was foods I had eaten. And occasionally I would feel a rumble in my stomach and then I would just get this sharp craving. But it would be a craving associated with a past memory of eating like a really delicious food or a really intense food. And um, this is it, basically. Um, If you want to get rid of parasites, reintegrate trauma constructs in your stomach of um, indigestible situations, indigestible items. But also, you can go back and think about these kind of micro cravings. And cravings can come from a number of different things. But when you have a craving that's sensory focused, it's a craving of a sensory food experience you had in the past. And it's not related to you being in a starvation state because cravings can also come from liver trauma. Um, But these micro cravings and micro traumas, they're quite unique and you can kind of perceive them as something totally separate once you get the hang of it. So this is good news. This means that through psychobiology, you can detach and permanently and effortlessly remove parasites. So if you've ever done a parasite cleanse, um, it's quite intense. The body feels very toxicified from the aggressive components used and there's always a Herxheimer reaction, a detox reaction. But if you address it through the root cause, through the consciousness realm, um, the trauma reintegrates seamlessly and the parasite simply detaches and dissolves with no fight or toxicity. So the best way to deal with parasites would be to do something like do a long juice cleanse. Um, You can use lots of ginger to put your stomach in a bioenergetically warm state. Um, The Zen cleanse protocol is quite expensive, but quite well laid out and incredibly high quality product. Um, That would be another way to do it. But you basically do something which challenges your normal digestive process, which puts it under kind of tension. And you'll notice you start getting food cravings and some of them might be starvation related, but that's usually the same craving associated with your starvation trauma. But when you start getting many different cravings of sensory experiences of foods you've eaten, simply tune into that memory of eating that delicious food or that disgusting food. Imagine stepping into that memory and relive the experience of the food overtaking you, of how you just tuned out for a second and fully tuned into the food sensory experience and how for a moment there it was just screaming in your perception, this food. That's the moment the micro trauma was created. So you can step back into this memory relive it, re-experience that, and you may feel, it's very subtle, you may feel a slight tingling somewhere in your gut, you may feel where the trauma construct is active in your digestion. Not always, it's quite subtle. But basically, tune into that sensory track and that sensory memory, and just set the intention, I effortlessly digest all items. And just visualize yourself smoothly and easily digesting that food and it running through your whole digestive tract and purging and reintegrate it. And at the same time, you can address the kind of higher dimensional conceptual realm manifestation of this trauma, which would be an etheric kind of visualization of a worm or parasite sticking out of your stomach. So you can reintegrate the trauma through affirmation and visualization, but then you can imagine... I will see my entity associated with this trauma and just tune into any tension in your stomach from this memory and just set the intention. You can't do it wrong, particularly with the healing blueprints in my voice. You can't do it wrong. Just set the intention. I perfectly digest this construct and I remove this entity and take your fingers and imagine pulling off a little worm, any little etheric worm sticking out of your stomach and burning it with a violet flame in your mind. This is how you go through reintegration of parasites. And um, you can do it piecewise. You can do it one by one like that. But really the best thing to do is deal with the macro traumas in the stomach of indigestible situations, indigestible nasty items that you came into contact with. And um, 
this should really help out your digestion and your situation with parasites if that's a problem for you. Now, the last aspect of the stomach and indigestible morsel traumas is how they manifest in your perception. This is where avoidance comes from. If you find that you're a highly avoidant person and um, this kind of alarm bell feeling of avoidance pops up in you all the time, it'd be really good to tune into your stomach and see, is this radiating from your stomach? Can you conceptually see that this is related to your stomach? So for example, <clears throat> if you have a friend that you just like have a bad feeling about, like you just get this avoidance alarm bell ringing feeling, and it's not a feeling from your intuition, it's just a biochemical response like, ooh, that guy makes me nauseous, something like that. It'd be worth thinking about shared experiences you have where there's an indigestible item involved. Because this construct of an indigestible situation, its survival purpose is to avoid indigestible items, etc., whether conceptually or physically in terms of food. And so it's got kind of an alarm bell construct attached to it, this feeling of avoidance. And um, this can really affect a relationship if you have a trauma related to a person um, you'll naturally kind of avoid them like you would avoid toxic materials. And uh, something like this could really change the way you interact with that relationship um, if there is kind of the shared trauma component.